Thank <laughs> you. 
display of flag waving and patriotism. The game plan for such Independence Days was set in 1776 by John Adams. He wrote, it ought to be solemnized with pomp and parade, with shows, games, sports, guns, bells, bonfires, and illuminations from this time forward forevermore. For those reasons, we pay tribute to community, to state, and to nation. We salute Missouri, home of the Pony Express, hot dogs and ice cream cones, and the 500-year flood, where Mark Twain turned two boys on a raft into literary giants. The Muni Band plays former President Harry Truman's favorite song, The Missouri Waltz. history was Irving Berlin. To his credit, Alexander's Ragtime Band, Blue Skies, and White Christmas. In 1918, Irving Berlin wrote God Bless America for a patriotic musical. However, he felt the piece had too much patriotic zeal and chose not to use it. It was not until World War II that Kate Smith began singing Berlin's God Bless America on the radio. It became so popular 
Many referred to it as our second national anthem. We now present Irving Berlin's most popular patriotic tune, God Bless America. We get to, this is it. Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah? Cool. That's it. That. <laughs> has a rich musical heritage. How appropriate on this lump in the throat day, rich with pride and warm with nostalgia, that we salute our community, a community that once again has fought with its heart, a community that worked together and maintained, yes, we can do this again. And so we did. And today, that same spirit of cooperation find people working together in this community to make a federal levy a reality for St. Genevieve. The Municipal Band performs a march written by St. Genevieve native Bill Simon. The selection was in memory of his father, who served as a former St. Genevieve Band Director. And now, with the talented soloist Ralph Tomier, a very special and most appropriate feature, Dear Old St. Genevieve.
tranquility. May God guide your destiny. Dear old St. Genevieve. I think all of us here have one thing in common that we all do love, dear old St. Genevieve. And I'm very touched and very moved every time I hear this, and it's at least twice a year. Uh, if you listen to the words, we have so much to be proud of. We have been given so much, and we have so much to protect. And we are so fortunate to have people like Bill Simon, to provide us with this, the Muni Band to play it for us, and talented people like Ralph Tomier to sing it. Please give them another round of applause. <laughs> Next on the program is a medley of patriotic tunes and a work by F.W. Meacham with interesting stories associated with each individual title. They are the red, white, and blue colors of our flag, Dixie, the great song of the Confederacy, which ironically enough was written by a northerner, U.S. Grant's favorite song, Yankee Doodle, and the title song of the medley, American Patrol.
the low brass are featured with a version of the Star Spangled Banner. In tribute to our free nation, the band performs E.E. E. Bagley's National Emblem.
salute to the United States and its music, who better to salute than George M. Colhan? Oscar Hammerstein II wrote in the New York Times, never was a plant more indigenous to a particular part of Earth than George M. Colhan to the United States of his day. Because so much of his work revealed the themes of family and the flag, Cohen was challenged by a producer who asked, George, do you think you could write a play without a flag in it? The reply, typically flippant. I could write a play without anything except a pencil. Cohen was delighted to encourage the impression that he indeed was the living incarnation of George Washington, Jr., the Yankee Doodle Boy, and the Yankee Prince. With his head cocked to one side, Cohen delivered the irresistible, you're a grand old flag, which the Muni Band and Ralph Tomyer now present. the bitter civil war. 
The municipal band pays tribute to those who gave the ultimate sacrifice for freedom with the battle hymn of the Republic. Amid its lush green hillside, one can easily see the mighty Mississippi River. For two years, we have witnessed the power of that river. We have witnessed its muscle as it rose to menacing rates. Hoagie Carmichael provides us with a different river site that he wrote about in 1931. The municipal band performs Carmichael's The Lazy River.
address to the nation, George Washington urged that we observe justice and good faith to all nations, but remain politically independent of all. In a word, be a nation, be Americans, and be true to yourselves. The power of Amer the American idea endured not merely because it was promoted by men such as George Washington, but rather because it took root among everyday people. For liberty to prevail, we must all, as citizens, be willing to claim our place in history, however small that place might be. The American story depends on each of us. Henry Fillmore dedicated this next piece very simply to us all. We now perform Americans We. to the Valley High School parking lot for our regular concert. Summertime is that time when Americans are at play, a time for picnics, for ball games. It is a means of celebrating in an old-fashioned way, a way of casualness that is so true of Americans. And so is tonight's sing-along. It's very fitting. We invite you to sit back, think cool, and please sing along with Ralph Tonyer as he and the Muni Band present 
in the good old summertime. Philadelphia, after its premiere in 1897, wrote, 
It was stirring enough to rouse the American Eagle from his cliff and set him to shriek gloriously. We conclude with John Philip Sousa's Stars and Stripes Forever.